ready? It's the Roundtable with me, Robert Bannon. Welcome to the Roundtable, everybody. You're listening to us on the Broadway Podcast Network or you're watching us. I took it outside. I took it outside today because it feels like spring is here. It's the spring season on Broadway. And if you've been watching this show for years, you know I've been raving and fanning out and talking about a new musical that's coming to broad that's on broad it's on broadway right now you could see it tonight but it opens on sunday and we're talking about lampika i saw a production of this show in front of the set of avenue q at like a musical theater workshop at new world stages and i said this music is incredible and then i saw it at Williamstown and said, this show is incredible. Then we flew to La Jolla and I said, this show is incredible. And everyone needs to run and grab a ticket because this is the show to see. These artists are incredible. This modern production with the projections and the sets and the costumes. But at the end of the day, it's about the story. It's about the music. Carson Kreitzer is, A, she's way too smart to be on the show because she's like a Yale fancy award-winning playwright and she's gonna trash it up with me right here on the round table carson welcome to the show so so happy to trash it up you thank you for, i know that you guys have been through one month of previews months of rehearsal your show is frozen congratulations it is yes you are you are getting me the morning after we freeze uh, what yeah. is it like the Actually, moment the afternoon that says a little something that i still feel like this is the morning after we freeze <laughs> what was it like when the show was frozen how did it feel it, your baby you, your baby's grown up it's yeah it's been such a long time and i love the oh shout out to the avenue q set oh my god you really are an early adopter that's <laughs> that is delightful um yeah, it's been, and Matt and I have been working on this show for 14 years. And it's, uh, I knew it was going to be really, really difficult to, to let go. Um, Matt keeps saying, like, we're dropping our girl off at college. Like, we're picking out the dorm room furniture. We're trying to figure out what she's going to need. And then we're going to have to get in the car and drive away. And, like, even saying that uh, makes me a little choked up. Um, but the thing about this process is it has been so intense and so, so hands-on. We have done so much experimenting over the course of these previews. It's a little... It's a little, um, there's a bit of madness, but wonderful because you just, you learn so much from audiences. You learn so much about what's landing, what's not landing, hearing from different people, what they're grabbing onto, what they're not. And we had such a, an intense, intense and productive preview period that it actually feels like the right time. It, it feels like time to get back in that car. And I know, I know she is in the best hands possible. And that's all you can ask. As, it's so fascinating to me, this period in, in specifically, because we get used to, I, and you've spoken at, 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 at how you came up with the idea, which we'll ask you in a minute, and and the 14 years and how you collaborated with Matt and how you got involved with Rachel and and, and casting Eden and and this incredible bananas all-star cast that is this show and Raja yeah. as the choreographer and all of that. But for you to see this, the day that the show goes up and you're not at the theater anymore and the show is repeating, it has to feel great and exciting and and like you said, scary. Like, and it's, it's, I'm just so excited. I don't know what to say. <laughs> what, are you going to go to the show tonight? Are you going to take a nap? What are you going to do? Um, I am actually not a hundred percent certain. <laughs> I, I have people coming to the show and um, luckily I am, I am right nearby. The producers very wonderfully got me a place to set up camp near near the theater. Uh, so I will definitely go and see the people I know who came to see the show. Uh, tomorrow is, um, oh my gosh, no, that's today. Today's a matinee, Saturday. Oh, I am so tired. I can't imagine. 
Saturday, my parents are coming to the matinee and then I have a bunch of people come to the evening. So I think my whole day will be like seeing people who have seen my show, but not seeing the show. Right. Um, but it's, I did, I watched it last night um, and I actually watched it Saturday, which was when the actors knew Freeze was right around the corner. And we just had that one more rehearsal on Tuesday and I already saw them just breathing in it differently and taking ownership and knowing no one is gonna throw a line change at them ever, ever again. I mean, this, this whole cast, they are just heroes. Um, the amount of changes and things we needed to look at and what if it was a little bit this and they've been doing that through the entire rehearsal process. And as we just continued to refine and shape, because it's a different thing on paper, at music stands, around a table, once you get it into space, it just exists differently. And you get the choreography coming in, you get the staging coming in, and some things are more efficiently told and we don't need words about them. And some things are harder to track and we need more words. <laughs> so it's just, it's been a lot of experimenting and I am very excited that our beautiful, beautiful cast gets to sail from here. Well, while we're talking about it, you know, Lampika is out and, and it's, it's, it's right at the Long Anchor and it's gorgeous and the set is gorgeous and the theater is gorgeous and it's an evening like you will not go to LampikaMusical.com and get your tickets. Get them, get them because when the show opens on Sunday and word is out, folks, and this, you all better grab a ticket while you can. Carson, you, um, you, we talk about the storytelling and we talk about what you, you're doing on stage. I saw the invited, I went to the invited dress and I have not seen the show. Uh, the rumor is it's going to be a whole other show. It's it, you. Oh, you are going to see a different show. You are definitely going to see a different show than you saw at the invited dress. Absolutely. What about it? I, I was reading uh, and I've, I've, I've been doing this show for a few years. Sometimes shows go up on previews and they say, well, it is what it is. What about what, after 14 years, what made you guys work every night and, and to get this right? Like, what is the drive? What was the inspiration that made you say, like, we're not going to settle. We're going to make every moment of this process count. Oh, uh, I mean, partly it's, you know, it's the team. It's, it's Rachel. It's Raja. It's, you know, our, our incredible designers. It's the gameness of, of our incredible acting talent who can handle it. Um, but it really is, I think it's partly a result of having this 14 year process and having constantly, constantly, constantly to make decisions based on runtime. And this is a woman with more life than can fit into two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, or two and a half with the intermission. Um, that's tight. That is tight for the amount of ground we're trying to cover and the amount of just epic emotion that's in there. And that's that's something I've really learned coming from playwriting to uh, musical theater. What a song does is so utterly different than what that amount of stage time does in a play. But once you start having songs, they take up just a lot of the real estate and you need to get that, you need to get the, the text very, very, very concise. And you have to make decisions about what, what gets told in this iteration. Um, and we actually came in to rehearsal with more being told and we had to lose some along the way. And I think a lot of previews for me anyway were about determining like what are the pieces that we cannot live without and how do we get them back in without sacrificing flow of the act and you know where where the audience is feeling things. And um, so it's really, it's it's been a very uh, scientific method 
experimentation time, which is which is incredible. It is incredible. And um, what you talk about, you know, Tamara de Lampica and the story, you're talking, you're covering decades of life. Um, and, and you're you're going through wars and you're going through, you know, regime, mil, military regimes and yes. coming of age story and sexuality and love and, and, and loss and all of those things. There's many central themes. Sometimes this show is looked at. It's it's the gay. It's the it's the queer show. But this is not it's the art show. But what this is, people, is that this is a show about relationships and love and finding yourself, in my opinion. I, I mean, I didn't. This is the writer. So who am I to say? But it's universal. So no matter who you are, no matter what your situation is, if you've never seen a piece of art in your life on uh, in a museum, this is a show about about life. It's a life. Absolutely. And there are, you know, there are ways that different people are going to grab different things. And if you are steeped in Tamara de Lampica, say if you have been a Madonna fan for many, 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 many years, and you know that she has had Lampicas featured in her videos forever, basically. <laughs> uh, that, that was one of the places I actually recognized the paintings from when I finally did get the Tamara de Lampica Tashin art book. And I thought, oh, right, right, I, I've seen, I've seen a lot of these. Uh, but you do not need to know anything about art. You don't need to know anything about history. We give you what you need along the way. And it's very much about life and choices and passions and how much of yourself do you pour into something you care about and that could be a painting it could be children it could be your job that is helping people and no one will ever hear about it but i think we can all tap into tamara's just thirst for everything life can give her oh and you will and it, it with with the with the words and the music and this staging it is a emotional roller coaster that you're going to leave and float right out of this theater and be ready to conquer everything and anything um it's it's universal woman is and and some of the, the songs you know um out of the con the song lives and works out of context when you see it in context it is one of the most gorgeous uh, moments on a stage. I don't know a way, not to spoil it, but I don't know a way to end the first act in, in a show that is more incredible than the, the end of that song. When you, the words to that song and the writing to that song, is it true? I read an article. You guys came up with that pretty quick and pretty early on in the process. That was our very first song. Ah! <laughs> And it, I mean, it remains the song that is the essence of the piece. You know, that was the song we wrote coming in and I had, I had been doing all this Tamara de Lampica research, wanting to find a collaborator to do this project with. So I was sort of steeped in Tamara and, you know, the, the artist scene in Paris at the time and this idea of, falling in love with the woman, being with a woman for the first time and what, what that awakens in her. And it, um, I mean, for me, that was, it's very much about the painting, Beautiful Raffaello, which I, I'm, I am not an art historian. I am just a, a lowly playwright. But when I look at that painting, it, it feels like a whole other level for her work. And it is, I think the paintings of Raffaella are absolutely among her best work, no, no question. And that, that connection gave her something new in her work. Oh, well, when you see it, you're going to look at the paintings differently and you're going to be walking through the streets. You'll be walking through Times Square singing, teach me to live, teach me to breathe. You'll be, you will be stuck with you. I told Matt that the song will be ruined in audition rooms forever. It will live in the American theater canon forever. What you have done will be a part of Broadway history. Carson, I don't know. I get sentimental for you all and this team seeing the show from the Avenue Q set, but you guys took an original musical that is not based on a book, 
a movie, a television show. It is not a revival. You are from the Midwest. You're from Minnesota. Oh. I'm an expat New Yorker. Please. Okay, got it. I apologize. But do you realize like your journey from you growing up to Yale, to New York, and you have an original musical coming to Broadway is like winning the, it's like the odds of the Powerball. It must feel like exhilarating and scary and beyond. I can't even imagine what this roller coaster has been like for you. It um, it has it has indeed been a roller coaster. <laughs> but I think for so much of it, the fear was that we weren't going to get this shot, that we weren't going to be able to bring this show to a large commercial theater. Because him and I keep saying, when we started working on the show, there is no way it would have been on Broadway. 14 years ago, this show would not have been on Broadway. It's a show about a very complicated woman who loves two people. I mean, that in and of itself, that it, that it breaks from the traditional romantic narrative. Even if you go to a uh, you know, woman struggling with her queerness narrative that, oh, she really should have left her husband because she was really a lesbian. This is a story of a bisexual woman who loves these two people and cannot let either of them go and therefore loses them both. <laughs> Sorry, spoiler alert. Oh, spoiler. But there's <laughs> twists and turns along the way. Don't worry. There's <laughs> so many. So many. Um, but that's always been really important for us that we we are bringing a really complicated story that even though this is musical theater and it's heightened and it's um, larger than life in many ways, like, like Tamara's work is, it is also a way of conveying a truth and a way of conveying the truth of our lives that are complicated. And she was living a life a hundred years ago that I think a lot of people will recognize as things we are struggling with now, still. <laughs> you know, um, my I, I was my, I came out later in life. I, I you know I came out in my thirties. I had a straight marriage. I, I you know I relate to so much wow. of this of the story because you can be in some place and care about somebody and love somebody and life can change and things can change and people evolve and grow. And we are still fighting these battles that she was fighting in many, if, if it's anti-Semitism, if it's anti-queerness, if it's if it's in the world in general, the fight for art and, and, and expression, it's as relevant as ever. That's uh, when, when we were first starting out, um, I kept talking about, there was, there was a moment, um, where there were rumors about Madonna and Sandra Bernhardt. And it was very, ooh, oh, oh my goodness, they were seen together at such and such. And did you hear? Oh, it's very exciting. Um, but I knew at that moment, if she had come out, if she had said, I am in a relationship with this woman, her career would have crashed and burned. We were not ready for that. As, as a society, you know, the East Village was very ready for it. The East Village was all about it. But beyond that, it, it would have destroyed her career. And that felt so much what Tamara was dealing with, that in certain inner circles, it would help the painting sell more. But if word got out further than those inner circles, she could lose everything. And then with the political situation changing and becoming more dire, she could be killed. Yeah, and it's very poignant in the, in the show and, and very relevant to today more as, as, as ever. Unfortunately, is terribly, terribly relevant right now. And uh, yeah, Matt and I have seen the show just be sort of refracting and reflecting off different things in the contemporary moment every time we do a workshop every time we do a reading every time we do a production it reflects light a little differently from what's happening right now 
Yeah. But the past like three or four clicks, we've just been like, this is enough, enough. We don't need to be any more relevant than this. Right. A woman artist trying to just live her life and love who she loves and do the best work she can with impending fascism, threatening, uh, oh, okay, we're good, we're good, we get it. It's it's relevant. It, it is re relevant. And, and, and that it will strike a chord with everybody that's there. And I, I love seeing the reposts and the people sharing and all of the fun things that are, that it's, it's living for. And again, it crosses so many mediums. Madonna speak. I, I Carson, you're gonna have to give me like the, the secret, like signal when Madonna comes to the long acre, I want to know I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. You know what? Can you give her a call? I, I wish I could, but I know, but, <laughs> but I know on tour, her most recent tour. I mean, it's the, the Lumpikas are, are prevalently featured and, Streisand talks about the Lumpikas in her book. She has a whole chapter practically based on it. It's yeah, the, the, the Lumpika moment that is happening right now is so crazy. And we could not have planned for that. No. We've been well, working for 14 years. Look, well, I was going to ask you, you know, I know that you... you never for two of them. <laughs> it was not our choice of timing. Right, <laughs> just, literally, true. It's been but, bubbled up. All in, in in the universe's timing, I guess, is what it is. Speaking of of her and her family, her granddaughter um, and, and 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 is a part uh, uh, has given its blessing is a part of the yes. production and has been. How was the process like to get in touch? How does that work as a nerdy theater person? How do you get the idea? I want to do a musical on Lampika. I want to write about her. When do you reach out? What was the reaction like? How has it been like that she's been a part of this process? Um, it, I mean, it has been amazing to have, to have Marissa's blessing, to have her as part of this process. And the scary thing for writers is knowing when to reach out, because I feel like if Matt and I had reached out in the early days, she doesn't know who we are. You know, we, we've done various works of theater. Matt has done musicals. I have done a, a bunch of plays about women on the margins that I wish were more central to our culture and whose stories should be told. It's like my, my mission in life. But none of those say this is what the musical would be like. You know, it's a whole different thing. And if it's your family, you know, you want that show to be the right show. Um, so we were, we were very lucky, I think, in being able to get, get the dough proofed and risen and ready to, to pop in the oven. Um, by the time Marissa came to see the show at Williamstown, and uh, yeah, I remember Greg Noble um, telling me that that Tamara's great granddaughter was was there tonight. And I just, oh God, oh God, she's here. Oh, I hope she goes. Which one is she? Am I gonna notice? Am I gonna know which one she is? And across the room, I saw a stunning willowy blonde who looked like a Lampika painting. I was like, oh, there, there she is. That's where. It's <laughs> and after the show, she came up to us with tears in her eyes and. She came out for drinks with the actors at us afterwards at the Purple Pub in Williamstown and was telling us these wonderful stories about Tamara. And it has, it has just been a, a delightful love fest. And I am, I am so, so happy that the family knows how much we care about Tamara's story and trusts us with the telling. It is beautiful. That what a beautiful, beautiful story uh, and and time. It was announced that the the cast album May twenty ninth mm -hmm. with a little company you may have heard of called Sony uh, it was uh, uh, will be available May twenty ninth. So hold on to that the the digital release and then it will be you can get a CD and get a copy copy. You can mail mm -hmm. it to the theater and Carson will make Carson sign them a hundred of them or a thousand um, and <laughs> live amongst all of the great epic musical theater recordings that will be, uh, this show will be in, in conjunction with in this wild, crazy season and this wonderful award season. I can't wait to see you march through uh, and people to see this incredible show. Before I, I let you go, can I just give a shout out to this cast, Eden Espinosa, uh, you know, Ambrimon, 
Andrew and Beth and and uh, what can you say about th what the work there your words you give these words to these artists and put them in their hands what can you say about them and, and what they do every night uh, they they do things that I could never do if I worked the rest of my life and lived to be a hundred I could never do what any single person on that stage is doing <laughs> they're they're incredible Incredible. I'm the, the combination. Um, I think especially because Matt writes very complex music and I write complex lived in three dimensional characters. And it's rare to really be trying to do all of that at the same time. So everybody on that stage is a freaking unicorn. I don't know if I can swear. I would. Uh, you said, but they and they are <laughs> motherfucking unicorn. Right? I mean, they're incredible. They can do everything, and the music soars, and you feel in the depths of your soul the emotions that they're going through. Um, part of the incredible joy of this process has been being able to write on and for these these actors, these bodies, these voices. Um, so, you know, Eden has been with us since um, since you first saw us on the Avenue Q set. <laughs> and um, Eden, Andrew, and Natalie Joy Johnson, who is Susie Solidor, have been, have been with us since Williamstown. And then we have been amassing this collection of people over years and like Amber did multiple workshops before we ever got to La Jolla, especially since we had that little uh, two year break when the entire world got unplugged from the wall one week from the beginning of our rehearsals. <laughs> and then the final, the final um, people joining us for this iteration as uh, we, we got George for La Jolla and um, Nate Stampley, our Baron is back. He was our Baron in Williamstown. We were not able to bring him out west, but now he's back with us. And Beth Level um, came to join us for Broadway. And her her Baroness is extraordinary. She's going to break your heart and make you... Oh, her 11 o'clock number in Act 2. I dare you to sit through that and not feel all the feels. It is, it is woo, a and moment. Our ensemble, similarly, have, many of them have been with us through workshop after workshop after workshop and waiting for us to get this, <laughs> this chance, just like we have been waiting. And then for this last iteration, we also were able to bring in some um, truly, truly insane uh, ensemble talents. I mean, I, it, it is heart stopping what they are able to do up there. <laughs> It is heart stopping. The dancing and the singing and the performance and and the storytelling and the music all comes together. If you think what they you try to try to get the just try to get Carson's lyrics down, then add Matt's music down. Woo! They're all eighth wonders of the world out there. <laughs> and, and dancing. And dancing at the same time. Well, you know, I, I'm going to rave about the show. I'm going to see you uh, on opening night. I will be on the red carpet. I am ready to bring something fashionable, artsy, and fun. I'm yeah. ready to cheers and celebrate Lim Limpica, a new musical about a true original. It is out. You need to get your tickets. You need to go. Oh, that's the book. That's it. The very, the original Tashin art book. That is, the pages are falling out of it at the back. I have sticky notes all over it. This is, this is the very book that I uh, shoved across a coffee shop table at Matt Gould 14 years ago. And we have been doing this ever since. Well, I know for both of you to be making your Broadway debuts in, in this piece and after this 14 years, it's not going to be 14 years till the next one. I promise you that because yeah. we're, we're ready for all the amazing, we're ready for this big, beautiful run and all the amazing work that's left and stories to tell. Go to LimpicaMusical.com and then of course follow Carson on Instagram or go to CarsonKreitzer.com so you can get all the information, all your other works, other, other plays and all, all the information about your amazing career. Thank you, congratulations and thank you for putting in the time and work to give us, give us art that really, really moves us. It is so beautiful to see queer 
original, women-centered, big, beautiful musicals on Broadway. We're here for it. Thank you. I am, I'm very, very happy and happy to be here in this insane profusion of, of gifts that is this, uh, this spring. It's well, a wild season. And the gift is ours. Happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.